Hey, in today's video, I wanted to talk about the difference between a product and a service. I'll describe what they are, what are the key components, what are the differences, and when you should use each or the other. When you think about products or services, people tend to think the obvious, that a product is something that you purchase or that you own, for example, a microphone, a camera, a computer. A service typically is something that you consume one time and it's gone. So imagine that when you go to a hotel and you spend one night, or you go to a coffee shop, have your coffee, drink it, and it's gone. So before I start, let me know what are you doing? Are you doing products or services yourself? What kind of work do you do? The best definition that I come across of what a product is, is that a product is a vehicle to deliver value. Meaning that a product is something that is going to solve a problem, need, that you have. Typical products are going to be your smartphones, your clothes, and there's a ton of software products out there like Microsoft Office, Excel, Docs, so on, Google products, and all the apps that you're using in your phone. A good definition for a service is what is included in Wikipedia. A service is an act or use for which a consumer, firm, or government is willing to pay. And when we are talking about an act or use, we are talking about intangible offerings. Typical examples of services are consulting, education, but also things like going to the movie theater to watch a movie. Not purchasing, different story, that starts to be closer to a product. What are the key components of a product? This has changed over the years because of their coming of software products, but the typical component of a product is their tangible nature, in many cases, physical existence, and also their durability. And to a certain degree, the ownership that you have as when you purchase that product. And key components to define a product is that you're usually going to have a process to fabricate or to create, develop those products. If you think about a mouse, you had to design it, you had to manufacture it, you had to have a production line. If you have a software product, it's not going to be exactly the same, but the process is not completely different given, well, all the differences. Obviously you don't manufacture anything physical, but you had to manufacture, let's call it that way, you had to develop your product. And the process is not going to be completely different. The differences between products that are physical and software products is that physical products, typically you do uh, many repetitions of the same design, the same product. When you come to software products, you usually don't have to do many repetitions. Just once you, once you have one copying or creating copies is relatively inexpensive compared to where it comes to physical products there, it can be quite expensive to scale the production. Of course, you have to take into account how you're going to scale production or scale the number of uh, customers that you have when you have software products and the infrastructure costs or whatever ways means that you had to deliver that uh, install, installer packages. That's going to be something that you had to take into account, but the costs are not going to be the same as when you had to fabricate, when you had to have a factory for physical products. And there are many different types of products. If you are interested, I'm going to link here a video for you to go and check out what are the typical types of products out there. When we talk about services, the key components are going to be quite different. Here, we are going to talk about the intangible nature of the service. Services are going to be, depends on the focus, if they are for business to business, B2B, or they are dedicated for consumers, B2C, they're going to be quite different. If you are thinking about the B2B case, you're going to think very typically about consulting where you as a person or as a small business can go and help another business to do their processes or improve their processes. This is going to last for some time, weeks, months, and then you do your job and then you're out. That is a service on itself. And when you think about consumer dedicated services, then you are thinking more about experiences. So for example, when you go on a trip, that will be a service to book the trip and book the experience around the trip. If you go to a flight, again, yet another service. One of the very key components of services is the customer experience, how the customers are gonna feel when they are consuming that service. And here they're going to come things like the expertise, the experience that the people delivering the service have, and also the potential customization of the service towards the needs of the user. Although the experience and the design of products is very important, in the case of services is even higher because it's something that it's going to really tailor that experience towards the user, something that not necessarily you can do with all the products. 
There's products, yes, that they have a great design, they have a very great experience, and they have some degree of customization. But usually with a service, the degree of customization is much bigger or higher because it can be negotiated with the person that is delivering or the company that is delivering the service. So what are the main differences between products and services? First of all, products tend to be standardized, tend to be more repetitive, and you want to be able to solve a problem or need that many people out there have. While services can be more personalized, and typically, of course, services are going to be around or offering around some area or some problem or some need, but because of the nature of the service and the fact that somebody can, is helping you in that moment, that person can be very flexible and can even step out of that area of the initial service and give you a better experience in other areas that maybe you didn't expect in the beginning. An example of how to change your experience is that how can you change, for example, what a regular coffee shop is and how can you change that experience and include all the things that other coffee shops out there are not going to have. It was very popular back in the 90s and early 2000s to have board games in certain coffee shops or books for people to come and read. You wanted to, for people to spend more time to have a better experience when they were in your coffee shop. You didn't just want them to come, consume a coffee and get out of the door. The pricing strategies can be quite different also when it comes to products and services. Products tend to have a more standardized way of pricing. Services can be quite different. And um, in many cases in services, you are charging many times per hour, where in products you are not necessarily, or you don't see many products that are charged per hour. Many products are charged as a one-time payment or as a subscription or many different ways that are not exactly the same as you typically see in services. Another key difference is, is that the products, the consumption of the product is separated from the production of the product. First you produce the product, then you sell it, then it's consumed. Many times the consumption of the service happens at the same time or very close at the same time as the production of the service happens. So if you think about consulting, you're consuming the consultation at the same time as it's happening. So why all this is important? Why you should care about the difference between a product or a service? Many people want to create products and that's kind of common. And some people want to focus more on services. I think that, or I had the feeling that more people want to do products than they want to do services. And this is just a hunch. It's not based on any obscure study that I will never share with you. But <laughs> no pun intended there. But if you think about when you should be choosing a product versus a service. First of all, products have a tangible uh, nature. So if you want to produce something physical, obviously that's typically going to be a product in most of the cases. You could argue if a coffee in a coffee shop is a service or is it a product. And products are also going to be usually easier to distribute than services because they have a more scalable nature because they tend to solve a very generic problem for many people. And you, if you think about products, you can create the same product like a software tool, like, I don't know, Notion to help people organize their lives. And it can scale up, get more consumers relatively easily. And whereas if you think about consulting, the consultant has so many hours that can be working, so they cannot replicate themselves, at least not that easily. So the scalability of consulting or services is not as high. When it comes to services, one of the most important cases where you want a service is when customization and expertise are key factors for the service or the business that you want to create. It's not that uncommon that when you're working with a consultant, whether you're the consultant or you're hiring a consultant, that when you are working with them, you find out that they have more expertise in certain areas that you didn't count on. Then they can help you to solve those problems that they were not maybe initially in the scope that you were expecting to have. And of course, you can think of services as an instant gratification. You want to have an experience to deliver that great feeling, that great moment for the people that are going to consume the service. But don't think that these lines are completely like a very solid line that separates a product and a service. There are many products that have services on top of the products. And you can think about, for example, Notion again. Notion, you have a toolbox in a way that you can use in many different ways. So you can use services like somebody that comes and help you to actually implement 
Notion so it serves your needs. So that's a very common thing to have a, a combination between a product and the services around it. You can sell education about how to use Notion, and you can do this with many different products, especially with software for us, it's very common to have a combination of both product and services. And of course, finally, you probably have heard of the term SaaS, software as a service. And here you can think of examples like AWS, Amazon Web Services, where you can go and as you need it, you can rent out computing power or storage power for your data or whatnot. Very focused on all the web services, obviously, that Amazon provides. Uh, but basically what you do is that you don't need to purchase the product, you just purchase it or you pay for it as you need it. So in that case, it's very close to what a service is. So one thing that I would like to highlight when you want to define your, if you're going to do a pro service, one important key component that you had to check is also what is the addressable market out there. If the addressable market is huge, in many cases, a product is going to be a better fit. If it's a smaller, then usually a service is going to be a better fit. And that is not always 100% true, but it's a relatively easy rule of thumb to follow. And products also are going to be highly scalable compared to services. And when you're thinking about creating your own business, make sure that you think about all these aspects because many people jump in into the, I want to create a product when it's not always necessarily a product the best solution. Sometimes it's better if you provide a great service with a great experience as a B2B, for example, when you're consulting a company than necessarily trying to create a product. Creating products can be really tough and Finding product market fit can be very difficult. Sometimes it's better if you start with a service, see the needs out there, understand better what problems people have. And once you understand better the situation, maybe you can think about creating a product if you think that there is enough people that have that problem out there. And always try to balance because in some cases, yes, the jump is going to be important. It's going to be something that is going to help you grow if that's your goal. But in some other cases, you might not care so much about growing, but you are comfortable doing services and doing consulting, for example, and that might be your way to go. And yes, I focus a little bit too much about software products and consulting because that's the area that I know pretty well and where I have a lot of experience and I don't have so much experience with creating physical products. But when you think about physical products, you also are going to have to think in very similar terms. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. It helps YouTube to share this video with more people that have similar interests. I talk a lot about different types of products, like physical products, software products. If you want to know more about the different types of products that you can be creating, go check out this video. I will see you in the next one. And remember, stay safe.